volume two, discussing what we're going to do once we shut down all the nuclear power plants and need to, a place to put the waste. Um, thinking of it logically, step by step, well, we're going to have to move everything. So I know everybody's probably seen these videos before, but looks like we can move small amounts around the country if we need to. Um, doesn't seem like the best method, but anyway, here's some footage showing some of the tests that have been done. But remember, when they do these scientific tests, they're bulletproof. Okay, they're 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 built to succeed. What I would worry more about is after, say, you know, 10 to 15 years of disposal, when it's just an everyday Joe job, and you know, somebody forgets to tighten the bolts on the cask before they let it loose. Anyway, enjoy the footage. It's cool. Bye. The first test, a truck carrying a 22-ton spent fuel cask impacted a 690-ton concrete block at 60 miles per hour. It was cleaned up and impacted a second time, but at 84 miles per hour. The cask also survived this more violent crash with only minor damage. In the third test, a diesel locomotive crashed into a truck at 81 miles per hour. The stalled truck carried a 25-ton shipping cask. Cask deformation was minimal, and the ability of the cask to contain and shield its radioactive contents was not compromised. The final impact test had a 74-ton shipping cask carried by a cask rail car crash into the concrete block at 81 miles per hour. This same cask and rail car were then positioned over a pool of jet fuel and subjected to an engulfing fire, much more severe than the fire that might occur in a train wreck. After 90 minutes, three times the duration of current qualification test criteria, surface temperatures exceeded 1400 degrees Fahrenheit but inside the cask, where the spent fuel rods would be contained, temperatures were below 300 degrees, not enough to melt the spent fuel rods. Only a full-scale rail crash would really prove the point. So, in July 1984, the CEGB organized Operation Smash Hit. The same flask as was used at Cheddar was fitted with a new lid, filled with a ton of water and 200 steel bars once again to simulate uranium fuel rods, festooned with measuring instruments and mounted on a British Rail flat roll, the kind of wagon used for transporting operational flasks. This was then derailed and turned on its side on a stretch of British Rail test track at Old Dorby in Leicestershire, as if it were a real accident. The train was set in motion without a driver, Eventually, it reached 100 miles an hour. It plowed headlong into the derailed flask and wagon. The draw hook on the front of the locomotive hit the edge of the flask, but the lid stayed bolted in position. There was some scarring of the steel and buckling of the outside cooling fins. But the flask had been pressurized to 100 pounds per square inch before the test, and measurements taken afterwards showed that only 0.26 of one pound of pressure had been lost, proof that it had remained intact and totally safe for the public had it contained actual radioactive materials.